get the MAC address, bring it back to networking, have them figure out if it's been on the network, try and register it and whatnot. Yeah. Students also don't like the fact that they have to buy the USB to Ethernet adapter. Okay. Um, as far as I understand it, Bradford recognizes <coughs> MAC addresses based on if this is a Microsoft Xbox, yeah. Nintendo, whatnot. Wii's have built-in wireless capability. Yeah. Is there any chance that we could open wireless to let gaming systems on so that it could natively recognize the Wii MAC address and let it on without having to go through that whole loop through, through networking? <coughs> all there, 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 wireless now. Well, there are, there's ways to do it for sure. The, the challenge we face is how do we make sure that we don't open up an environment now that can be abused by people who either aren't on campus paying for these services or that there aren't people that then use a disproportionate amount of these services. We only have so much bandwidth for everything. So we have to make sure that we manage that properly. And that's our challenge. And we have, sometimes we, sometimes we can certainly do better at how we allocate that bandwidth and how we manage the ability for people to get on the network. Um, gaming takes up a tremendous amount of, of, of bandwidth when you look at the, the combined usage that we have on campus and also uh, music downloads and, and videos take a tremendous amount of bandwidth. So our challenge is how do we then make sure that we manage that properly so that everybody at least gets a fair share of that bandwidth. And sometimes that's a moving target and sometimes it's not. But what we need is this kind of feedback um, because we have to know where these pain points are. We have to know where that frustration is because we can't resolve it unless we do. Um, so to know that there's a frustration point with people having to buy something or get their particular console on the network is just critical information for us. And if, unless we can see, we don't know, we're not always the best ones to see that trend, you are. So unless you can you, you actually show some kind of trend to us and, then, and, and say, hey, look, we have these folks that say we need this, then it becomes a real issue. It's not just one person saying, geez, I need this one thing. It becomes now a trend and, and something we need to look at from a customer service perspective because we must be able to, to give everybody here who's, who's our customer and, and the student on this campus the, the experience that they need and deserve. And that includes not just your educational experience, but also um, the quality of life. I mean, you live here if you're a resident, then you deserve certain things that, that you would normally have if you weren't on this campus. So that's our challenge to make sure that we, we come up with a good way of serving that up. So things like this are important to know that these things are trends, to know that they're experienced by a broad number of people, not just particular one-off kinds of things. So if I can summarize this answer, yes. Um, and and I understand there's a, a couple points that I can just uh, highlight. I'm not happy with how Bradford uh, <laughs> serves you, and I've challenged these guys, and we're um, deeply involved in finding a solution, but I would just assume <laughs> turn it off because I don't want to see lines of help desk where people can find I can't get to Bradford, I'm isolated, I can't connect to the network, that's a definite problem for me. But we need to protect our network, we need to protect our network from off-campus traffic and stuff like that. So we're working with Bradford now to try and find the best solution for, for you, really, that protects our network and provides you the best access without major problems in connecting to the network. So, And I agree with you on that, and I've talk to different people I know that go to different universities and such, and as yeah. far as uh, access control programs, I honestly don't think Bradford is that bad on our end. I know people that have to log in like every Monday, and it takes like an hour to scan their computer with yeah. different things like programs like Clean Access and whatnot. Uh, but as far as Bradford goes, I, I honestly don't think it's that bad. Sometimes it is a pain. Yeah. But I understand that we need something on an I came from a technical institute before here. We didn't have those kind of problems. We scanned uh, scan the computers. We checked to make sure that certain things existed. Uh, but they didn't have long lines to help us because it couldn't get to the network. So anytime one student tells me they can't get on the network, that's a problem for me. So. And some of these things are for, for perception issues, too. For example, if somebody who's going to the Bradford process fails a registration. It's not Bradford that's the problem so much as the reason why they failed the, the, the host turn process. Maybe they have an antivirus conflict. Maybe they're not compliant for particular reasons. And those are machines that are more vulnerable than to any kind of problem were they on the network. So we want to be able to, to solve it <coughs> up front and then allow them to, to pass that registration process. So there's a few types of issues that can all be perceived differently. And that's, that's a, that managing those perceptions is difficult at best because there's, 
there is a perception for every person who has to go through that process. But, but a quick answer to your question, we're setting up a wireless network so you can use it. And unless it's creating problems for us, then we're not going to turn it away. And I just want to add, you mentioned stuff about the bandwidth. Um, I can easily get three times the speed on wireless than I can on wired connection which makes no sense if you know about how wired connection and wireless should work. Uh, technically, wired connection speeds should always be faster than what you should be able to pull down on a wireless speed. Um, as, a, as a rule, yes. Um, there's a lot of dependencies and a lot of um, variables that are that mix in this particular environment. Um, one thing that, that we're up against and we're trying to solve right now is, as it worked to our network upgrades, we're trying to solve um, a lot of disparity issues that exist right now. We have some buildings that are, are cable, very old cable, and they can only move data 10 megasecond. second. Meanwhile, our new installations can move things in. So as we work through these systems, you might be jumping on a portion of the wireless network that runs through a slower backbone segment than if you were in a different location on a different wireless access point, which gives you faster access, <coughs> or through a wire, or whatever the case is. So it's, it's highly dependent. And these are the things that are challenges for us to make sure that number one, we resolve them once and for all, but also to, to I think a little information in this regard can go a long way and hopefully get some, some understanding, some patience from, from people who have to use it and are frustrated by it because there isn't an overnight solution to a lot of these things. Sometimes it's new architecture or new system. Or and like we said, it's going to take us probably 15 months to do a complete scrub of the I knew that was it. was it was really, really bad timing. I was thinking to myself that believe it or not, four fifteen this morning. Could this have been? But the long and short of it is we had a server, we have three email servers. Uh, one of them had a major hardware failure and it's just basically offline. We have to rebuild it from scratch. The other two are working, but while we were trying to fix the one that's broken, there was some loading issues that we had to contact the vendor and help them, have them help us work through so that the ones that were working still were responsive enough to let people get on the web interface. That's the long term. We never want systems like that to fail, but just when you I hope that nothing's ever going to die, it's technology, it's, it's hard work. So. And it, it never fails at a convenient time, right? So what we're trying to do is build redundancies into all of our systems, our networks, and our mail systems. We had problems in the spring with mail, and it was on it was on one server at the time, right? Well, we it was on actually the same physical box. Right. And we got the vendor to provide us new a new hard drive and a new controller. And so now we have three mail servers. So we're making it takes time to get all these things in place, but we're trying to make sure that we have redundancies for the future and build our network so it's robust enough to handle game type traffic and things like that. So but it's gonna take us a little bit of time to get there. Unfortunately. Even if we had all the money in the world to do it, it would still take Yeah, so all right, go ahead. All right. So, um, there's a <coughs> game that I play, StarCraft II, that is very. Yeah, the same one. Hmm? Yeah. Oh. Um, it's, <laughs> so, when you play it online, it's very choppy. <coughs> it freezes up roughly every three seconds. And, you know, you might think it's bandwidth, but I've played other games that have online that have been equally bandwidth intensive and there have yeah. been no issues. So I'm not sure. Uh, can we do something about this? Uh, you wrote it down for yourself. Yeah. Um, is that a, is, forgive me because you know that I don't game, but is that fine. an Xbox thing? Is that no, a, that's, a, that's a computer it's an online. thing. That's it's a computer online. Okay. Okay. I'd just like to add to that. Um, yeah. We do get complaints at the help desk about game issues like that. A lot of the times they don't get taken seriously at all. Sorry. I, 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 just, I just like to add that.